Afternoon everybody, Rich here, back for another video for the Diecast F1 review. Here today we have three Renaults. In the centre we have the Renault R24, to the left we have the R25, and to the right we have the R26. Now I've been requested to review the R26 several times, and also the R25, um, but I haven't been really, really requested to do the R24, but I thought, as the cars are all very similar and are all evolutions of each other, I thought I'd do uh, all three of them in order. So we'll start the day with the R24, which is this lovely model down here, and we'll get rid of the other two. So I'm going to do these in order, and hopefully in succession as well, so hopefully I won't get any issues with that one there. So I'll just pop the camera back down. Tripod a bit broken, which doesn't help. Right, there we go. Now we are moving a bit closer. Zoom out a bit. There we go. There's our Renault R24. Right, we're on to the car itself. The car itself started in 2004 as probably the second best car, uh, with the uh, its ability to launch off the line pretty quick and its uh, drivability. It was a very fast car, and also a very striking car as well. It was taking a lot of uh, influence from the uh, Ferrari F2003 from the previous season in 2003, with the curvy side pods, needle nose, and aerodynamic bits which stick out all over the place so it's a very striking car and very different to the predecessor the R23 which I also have on the shelf behind me uh, so I may review that one as well but the R24 uh, was clearly better than the Williams and Miles better than the McLaren at that time as McLaren were busy counting the pieces of their engine every weekend rather than actually finishing races the Williams was fast but just not on the pace the, uh, the Renaults were clear second at the beginning of the season but it wasn't long before BAR caught up and passed them. The R24 looks set to be a race winner but Ferrari were just miles ahead. Um, the car was it, was, it was a race winner once but it looked it looked like it could be a race winner at a couple of other, uh, a couple of other events. Um, the Belgian Grand Prix comes into mind as well with both cars are running 1-2 and they both had uh, technical issues i.e. engine. The Canadian Grand Prix could have been as well but uh, Ferrari ran away with that one as well. As both cars had technical issues there. I think there's a couple of other ones as well. Uh, what was it? What was 2004? Was an 18 race season, wasn't it? So, yeah, there were a couple of races, a couple of other races. I think Renault could have been uh, pretty uh, dominant that year. I think Italy as well. I think uh, Fernando was uh, up for the victory in Italy as well, but he got passed and then spun off quite comically. But uh, there we go. But uh, uh, overall, throughout the season, the team eventually finished third behind BAR. Too many mistakes throughout the season. And uh, Jano Trulli, although he did win the uh, Monaco Grand Prix, a pretty chaotic race uh, all round. And it was another race where Renault were running 1-2 until uh, Fernando dropped it while trying to lap Ralph Schumacher in the tunnel. Why he tried there, I don't know, but uh, there we go. And uh, yeah, it was a race winning car there, but Jano Trulli quickly dropped off, well, quickly dropped off the pace well, immediately. Uh, I think the last straw was at the Belgian Grand Prix where he just drove off the circuit and into the tyre wall at a very low speed. And uh, pretty much destroyed his his uh, relationship with Flavia Briatori, um, but it did uh, sort of rekindle his career as he went to Toyota and uh, did quite well there. But uh, it's sort of the wrong time to leave to leave Renault really. Renault going into two thousand five will be the strongest they'd ever be. But uh, in the other car, Fernando Alonso had a steady season. He didn't win any races, but he had a steady season and uh, yeah, he looks set to uh, capitalise in two thousand five. Uh, the car going into 2005 was very much different, but I'll talk about that one another day. The R24, uh, like I said, was a very striking car, very unusual looking car in comparison to its predecessor, but uh, it's sort of setting off the norm for what the Renaults would be. The, the car would be a straight evolution going into 2005 and 2006, and probably 2007 and 8 as well. The car didn't change a lot in appearance. Um, well, I said, you know aerodynamics and uh, all the sticky out bits and the shape of the car overall but uh, it did sh it did change a little bit but uh, <laughs> sorry I just keep glancing over to the right to have a look at the other cars to sort of see in comparison the uh, the R25 and R26 are very similar and the R24 although very similar as well is clearly different <laughs> there we go and I sort of run out of things to say now as well but uh, there we go but uh, yeah Fernan Fernando had a steady season throughout the year uh, didn't like I said, didn't win any races, but plenty of seconds and thirds. Um, but the uh, the team dropped off the pace pretty much after the victory, or at least Liano truly dropped off the pace immediately after his victory in Monaco. Um, one of the other issues he had was at the French Grand Prix. He was running second 
or was it third? I was running third, I think, on the final lap, but uh, Rubens Barrichello passed him on the last lap, last corner of the last lap, and uh, nicked third off of him. So pretty embarrassing for Yano and pretty embarrassing for the whole Renault team, as it was the French Grand Prix as well, which uh, didn't help. But uh, the Wonder Boy and the other Renault, Fernando, kept his seat and uh, went on to be <laughs> the Wonder Boy for a couple of more years. Um, and Yano tried to... Uh, Although that uh, issue in France, he'd had a bigger issue at Silverstone where he destroyed the car. I think it was either a tyre failure or a suspension failure coming out of the uh, bridge turn at full speed. Something broke on the car and he barrel rolled into the tyre. Well, he hit the tyre ball, then barrel rolled a few times and uh, completely destroyed a car. But uh, that's that. Um, I keep talking about Yano, which doesn't help, but uh, his, his uh, escapades on and off the track are more, sort of more headliney than what Fernando were doing in the other car, but... Uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, the R24, definitely a good looking car. Unusual looking car at the time because Formula 1 was in the in the era of evolution aerodynamically. I mean, 2003 Ferrari brought out their car, uh, the F2003 GA, which I've reviewed already. And that had the the curvy side pods, which of course are these things, which is now the norm in Formula 1. Every car has them and have had them for about 10 years now. And uh, all the aerodynamic gubbins around just in front of the rear wheels as well the turning vein or the veins uh, or the gills in the bodywork the chimneys the wings and things like that I think Ferrari pioneered that and then uh, Renault were the first to jump on the bandwagon it would be another year or so before McLaren would do it um, BAR were miles behind uh, Williams were a long way behind as well um, eventually they all caught up and uh, until 2008 when all these things were banned so uh, it was a short lived thing not a bad thing, I think, really, if uh, all those things were banned, because it was getting a bit uh, out of hand with all the aerodynamic gubbins. I mean, the BMW F108 was a pretty much the uh, uh, the uh, the pinnacle of aerodynamic uh, silliness. But uh, there we go. But anyway, enough about uh, Formula 1 and silliness. Let's get on to the model itself. I'll adjust the camera again, because it's at a funny angle, and the light ain't very good again either, because it's another shitty day outside. It's been pissing me rain all day, and we haven't got very good natural light. And I don't want to turn the light on above, because it's not well, not very good light. But uh, there we go. Now, the viewfinder isn't really doing this uh, car justice. The, the blue is really off, and it's sort of blending in with the blue of the base as well, which doesn't help. But uh, as you'll soldier on... And this is the Yano Trulli version, you can probably tell that by the way it says Yano Trulli on the side pod and on the airbox and on the top of the chassis. Uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, Yano Trulli's car. But, uh, the Fernando one is still, you know, I could, I could easily pick that one up as well. It's not a rare car, I'll get onto that one first. It's not a rare car to come across, it's uh, quite common. And uh, I picked this thing up for £10 in 2005, so it's, it wasn't a highly... Uh, collectible car at the time when I bought this, I think it was September 2005 I bought this, yeah, for £10 uh, on a website, I think it was Antics Models, but uh, not sure if they're still going. I've got the receipt somewhere actually, I'll have to dig that out, but uh, there we go. So on to the car itself, and I've already said it's the Fernando, uh, the, the Fernando it's the Arno Trulli version, and we'll do a quick view over the car, so we'll go down to the, the through the nose, so we've got the needle nose there, the front wing, through the suspension, all the cabin is there, and yeah, it's a very nice looking car. So you got the uh, the gills and the bodywork there. They're not highly detailed. They're, they're moulded into the body, but they're not uh, uh, actually see through. You can't actually see through them. They're just uh, moulded in and painted, painted over blue. So they're not actually detailed. So the engine cover there. Big panel gaps there in the uh, in the bodywork, but not a big issue. The wing row there. There's a car. This car has not been out of its box for about nine years, and there's already dust on it. So, oh, well, probably a leak in the box somewhere. But there we go. Got the Telefonica on the rear wing, which is something that's missed in Formula One. Another nice color or a nice sponsor that looks good on any car. And uh, a few scratches on the rear wing as well. I don't know where they come from. But we'll turn the car around, and we'll look at the uh, Coke bottle shape of the car. And you see the tight packaging of the rear bodywork there. So you see, it's a definite evolution going on here. This thing sort of evolved into the 2005 car, and you can see where it sort of went on. This car is probably the, the longest wheelbase of the three cars, so the R25 and R26, they're much shorter cars. The R24 is a longer car, but you can really see the evolution of the bodywork. Got the exhaust at the top, the uh, the gills and all the other wings and things. <laughs> Yano Trulli again written on the rear wing. You seem to have a fetish with... Uh, Yano's name on this car, or at least placing names on the car. 
and a quick look at the diffuser. There's plenty of going on under there. The diffuser there, just turn the car over and have a look. See all the uh, detail gubbers there. And the usual Mattel gump from the bottom there, made in, made in China 2004, manufactured this, that, and the other. And uh, Hot Wheels there. And a pretty flat bottom, you've got the usual thing, uh, the usual plank design there. So we look under the nose, and I'm just trying to get my hand out of the way, get a bit of light in there, so you can see the bottom of the nose. Single keel there, with the barge balls attached to the suspension. And uh, quite a bit going on under there. Let me turn the cut back over, and we'll get a look in the cockpit, so if we just get the thing around there. So there we go, there's in the cockpit there, so you've got plenty of buttons on the steering wheel. And plenty of dust around as well, which I really can't help. We have to get a cotton bud on that and give it a clean. We've got some plenty of detail in there. Yano's hands are a bit big around the steering wheel, but uh, there you go. Does the steering wheel turn? It do slightly. You can tell it's a Mattel model, the old steering arm's creaking. If it was mini champs, it would have fractured into a million pieces by now. Alright, get the tripod back into position again. So we've got the nice view of the barge board there with the uh, Modi mode trademark there and uh, big view of Yano Trulli they've got the little sponsors under this under the side pod as well so you've got uh, plenty of things there the, the Yano Trulli decal doesn't seem to be a, you know, applied all that well it seems to be a bit uh, frayed on the edges which is a bit of an issue and it's not very well done over the uh, join lines either it's a bit and there uh, sort of uh, the join lines were uh, well the, the gaps in the body were wider when they put the decal on and then they sort of I don't know, left the car to bake or something, and the uh, the join line shrank, and of course it's creased the decal a little bit, but not to worry. I mean, you can always peel that peel that off and uh, put uh, some mild seven decals on, uh, which is what a lot of people do. I would do that, but I'm scared I may bollocks it up because I'm not very good at those sort of things. I mean, there's a lot of Yano Trulli you got to peel off first, or at least uh, dissolve off, and I think the top uh, the blue paint on the top here, I think that is a decal. Um, so you may need to uh, be careful when you apply it, or at least try to remove the decal off of here. So that's uh, that issue there. So I'll turn the car around and go nose on, so I haven't done a proper front profile of the car. So if I turn the old camera up that way and get a good old look. So definitely a, a low raised nose if you like. Uh, one of the better looking noses of course of modern Formula 1. Of course today they all have penises on the end, or stubs, or mm, fingers, or thumbs on the, on the end, which looks ridiculous. But that's modern Formula One for you. And also, 2004 was the first year where we had the symmetric, was it the uh, the asymmetric or the symmetrical uh, engine cover, where the engine cover has to be a certain size now. Also, the, the wing rear wing end plates have to be a certain size as well. It's not a big issue, but it's something I think F the FIA or the stewards or whatever could you know make it, make it look a bit more streamlined. I mean, it doesn't look too bad on this car, and I, don't, I suppose it doesn't look too bad on modern cars. I know it, on some cars this year, especially the Williams, the, the bodywork does go down quite a way and does wrap around the body, uh, wrap around the engine, all that quite well. But the, 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 they sort of have a shark fin these days, it goes down up to about that point and then juts back in again. So it's basically just a fin, a shark fin um, today. So you can really do without that. You know, if the FIA want to get rid of that. You know, it wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, cause you can see the profile of the, the of the rear wing of the rear body. It's not is is a uh, noticeable on this car. It's more the modern cars you notice it more. So um, the uh, the rear profile of the uh, engine cover too bad. This has got a subtle sh uh, shark fin as well. You can sort of see the bodywork sort of curves a bit more there, but the uh, the profile is more straight. If you know what I mean? If you know what I'm talking about, then uh, <laughs> you're better the person than I am. But you can see from this angle, you can see there's a sort of shark fin, minor shark fin, but it's actually the bodywork is straight. So. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. It's more obvious on the 05 and 06 cars, but I'll get to them another day. And also the rear wing end plates. Um, it's the last year as well of the rear wing being in this position. From 2005 onwards, the rear wing was moved forward, so that the front edge of the rear wing was in line with the axle of the rear axle of the car. So the rear wing from 2005 onwards was much for further forward, and is still the same today, although much taller. Um, but yeah, I've waffled on for about 20 minutes here, so we're not getting very far. I'll have another look around the back. <laughs> and a look through the diffuser, or the rear wing. And uh, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a model I would recommend getting. I mean, it's not a hugely rare model now, or it wasn't rare when I bought it either. It's um, 
definitely one for the collection. I mean, if you're a Renault fan, I mean, it's definitely one of those colour schemes which is missed in Formula 1. I mean, the, the light blue, excuse me, the tripods come out here. Yeah, the light blue and the yellow is something that is missed in Formula 1 these days. And uh, when they went to ING, I thought, good God, it looked bloody awful, but uh, there we go. Yeah, the, uh, the blue is something which uh, needs to be replicated again. And, uh, yeah, it's uh, one of the blue... Nice blue colours. Of course, the R25 and 26 are the other two cars with this livery. Uh, also on the R23 and the R202, which I will review those later on as well. But we're just doing these three in order. But, uh, yeah, this is not a rare model. I mean, you can pick this up. I mean, I picked this up for a tenner, and that was a year after its release. And uh, today, maybe £15, £20, pounds, depending on which version you go for. I think the Fernando version is definitely you know, the more sought-after version, the number 8 car. Um, it's probably the more sought after because, of course, it's Fernando Alonso. The Arno Trulli version um, may be a bit more dear, I don't know, because he won a race that year. Um, so if you're, if you're after race winners, then the Trulli version is probably the go for. But if you're after world champions and that, you know, the Fernando version. But if you're like me, you collect anything, and I just picked this one up because it was cheap. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, you know, I'm not uh, biased towards one driver or one team, I collect anything. And that's sort of obvious for my collection. Um, so yeah, um, definitely one to go for. I mean, you probably pay fifteen, twenty pounds for it, maybe a bit more. Um, but if you want to do the decals as well, then you know, it's probably about another five, six pound, maybe up to a ten pound. Um, I'm not sure what that is in euros and dollars, but uh, probably a bit extra for the decals as well. They are available. I don't know. <coughs> excuse me. I don't know if they're available. Uh, you know, in two different versions. There are. You know, usually when you get a set of decals for, say, a Rothmans, Williams, or something like that, you get two different companies or three companies doing their own versions, um, and the quality varies, so I'm not really sure what to do about the decals. You know, sort of go what other people say, you know, look on the forums and things like that, because there are discussion forums for this sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, it's... Uh it's uh, one of the, it's sort of a, sort of an ongoing project if you want. Really, you can sort of uh, remove the decals and put on what you like. Um, but I won't be. I'll leave this as it is. I'll leave it completely stock. I do have a, have the box for it as well. Um, it's basically the same box as the other two Renaults I've got. You know, it's basically that box there, but for this car. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's the same box, same things and all that. that same stand, just with a different number on it. Um, but anyway, I've waffled on for quite a bit now, and uh, you've probably not learnt anything, but uh, there we go. I've had a good look round this car, and yeah, I would recommend it. It's definitely one that looks good in the collection. Um, and for the price, you can't really go wrong. It does stand out with that nice blue and yellow livery, and it's one I really would miss, in, well, I really do miss in Formula 1, this colour scheme. But uh, times change, and of course Renault are now yellow again, so we might see, may see something similar in a few years' time. But who knows? And who cares, really? Um... But yeah, that's uh, me waffling on, and um, that's pretty much it for this review. So this is Rich, signing off, logging off and disappearing, and I shall return in... Well, I'll return whenever I can. <laughs> See, it's interesting to say return in part two. Well, what's part two? I don't have a part, don't have a part one. Anyway, um, yeah, this is me signing off, logging off, disappearing, and I shall return with another review. So, bye for now.